God's blessings and under his grace and under his mercy. And as Americans, we're free from tyranny and oppression and we're given certain unalienable rights. As we gather today to celebrate those freedoms, we must never lose sight of the fact that America is you and, and me. We are a people who willingly paid the price to preserve and protect our nation's freedom. We've been blessed as no other nation on earth, and yet we must be cautious, cautious of our pride in such accomplishments, for our trust must not and cannot rest in our own strength, in our own doings. One of our greatest freedom fighters, President Abraham Lincoln, said over a century ago that it was the duty of nations and individuals to recognize the sublime truth announced in the Holy Scriptures and proved We now come into the presence of our Lord as we join together in singing our opening hymn, which is printed in your...
Oh Lord, you became flesh and dwelt among us. You came in human form to die for our sins and rise again to new life so that we can experience the real life you desire for us. You come to us today in your word and sacraments. Open our hearts, minds, and lives to the leading of your spirit and provide us the nourishment and strength we need Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. On this Independence Day weekend, we pause to pledge our allegiance to the flag of our country and to the flag of the Christian Church. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now to the Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the cross of my Lord Jesus Christ, and to the bay for which it stands, one Savior, eternal, with mercy and grace for all. Amen. How much freedom can one have? Today we rejoice in our spiritual freedom and in the freedom we have as citizens of these United States. What a privilege to be able to gather, to pray, learn, sing, and worship our God without fear. But we can never forget the high price of freedom. Jesus died to set us free from our sins and give us eternal life. Many men and women have given up their lives to ensure the freedoms we feel we enjoy in America and other countries around the world. We pause to remember and we pause to pray. Oh Lord, I confess many times I have taken my spiritual and physical liberties for granted. I have come to expect the freedoms I have rather than appreciate them for the privileges they are. Forgive me, Lord, and free me from my prison of sin. Help me to be grateful for the sacrifices made daily by others to ensure my freedom. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear friends, today and this weekend is a day of celebrating liberty, and I tell you with all joy and with all confidence that we are free. In Christ we're free, we're forgiven, we're blessed beyond measure. Praise God for this gift of grace through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We continue with our hymn of praise, My Country Tis of Thee.
rescue you. Look, look at my misery and rescue me, because I have never forgotten your teachings. Plead my case for me and save me. Give me a new life as you promised. Wicked people are far from being saved because they have not searched for your laws. Your acts of compassion are many in number, O oh Lord. Give me a new life guided by your regulations. I have many persecutors and opponents that have not turned away from your written instructions. I have seen traitors and I am filled with disgust. They have not accepted your promise See how I have loved your guiding principles. O oh Lord, in keeping with your mercy, give me a new life. There is nothing but truth in your word, and all of your righteous regulations endure forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from the sixth chapter of Romans. Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We died to sin. How can we live in any, in, in, in any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If we have been united with him like this is his death in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we die with Christ, well, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourself dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. In honor of our Lord Jesus Christ, we stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel, which today is recorded in the 10th chapter of Matthew, beginning at the 37th verse. Jesus is speaking. Do not, do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And anyone who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake, will find it. He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives the one who sent me. Anyone who receives a prophet, because he is a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. And anyone who receives a righteous man, because he is a righteous man, will receive a righteous man's award. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones because he is my disciple, I tell you the truth, he will certainly not lose his reward. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Congregation may be seated and I would invite the young people of our congregation, and if you're a little older you can come on down today too, to join us up in front. We'll go over here. Yep. Oop, I forgot my thing. All right, guys. Hey, how you doing? You got red, white, and blue on today. Why's that? 
Fourth of July, we're celebrating the Fourth of July weekend, aren't we? It's a wonderful weekend that we celebrate the freedoms that we have as a nation, the birth of our nation. We have a lot of great freedoms in this world, don't we? What are some of them? Any idea? We have the freedom to come together today, don't we? To worship our God, to pray to Him without worry of being persecuted. What else? We can live where we want, can't we? We can speak our mind as long as we're not mean to someone else. We have lots of great freedoms. We can go where we want. Nobody tells us where we can go, where we can live. Yeah, it's a great country we live in. And even though we have all these great freedoms in our country, we have an even greater freedom in our Lord Jesus Christ. Because in Jesus, we have freedom from sin, death, and the devil. And as Daisy and I were thinking about this this week, we were reminded of the story of Joseph and how he was in prison and how he was freed. And so I brought Daisy along with me this morning to tell that story of Joseph. Would that be okay with you guys? All right. So, Daisy. You're on. We're really going to get you mic'd up. You're going to have to stay close to me now. Okay. Okay. Joseph's brothers did not slavery. After some bad circumstances, Couple of days. When the cupbearer and the baker that worked for the Pharaoh came into prison with him because they disrespected the Pharaoh. So all three of them were in prison together the cupbearer, the baker, and Joseph. And one day the cupbearer and the baker they were looking a little sad. So Joseph turned to them and he asked them, Why do you guys look sad? And they said, Well, we both have these dreams and no one can tell us what it means. And Joseph said, well, aren't they God's interpretations? Shouldn't he interpret them for you? So, tell me your dreams, Joseph said, and God will interpret them. And God will interpret them for you through me. So the cupbearer told Joseph his dream, and he said, in my dream, there are there's a vine growing next to me, and I have the Pharaoh's cup in my hand. And there are three branches on the vine, and there are grapes growing from the branches. So I take the grapes, and I squeeze it into the cup, and I give it to the Pharaoh. And Joseph said, this is what your dream means. It means that the three branches represent three days. And within three days, the Pharaoh will restore you from prison, and he, you're going to work for him in the palace again as his cupbearer. But you will remember me. So the cupbearer was very happy with this news, and he went on and doing his prison things. And then Joseph turned to the baker, and he said, well, why do you look sad? And he said, well, I also have a dream, and I don't know what it means. And I need someone to interpret it for me. And Joseph said, well, aren't they God's interpretations? So, he told, so the baker told Joseph his dreams, and he said, in my dream... There are three baskets of bread on my head. And in, the, and in the baskets is the most delicious bread you've ever tasted. But the bread, these birds come down and they take the bread out of the baskets and they eat it and then it's gone. And Joseph said, well, this is what your dream means. It means that the three baskets represent three days. And within three days, the Pharaoh's gonna take your life. And as I can imagine, I don't think the baker was very happy with this news. 
But he went on, and within three days, both of these dreams came true. The baker died, and the cupbearer went back to work for the pharaoh. But he did not remember Joseph like Joseph told him to. So two years went by, and Joseph was still in prison. When one night, Joseph, the pharaoh was sleeping, and he had two dreams. And in his first dream, it was that he was standing next to the Nile River. And seven fat cows came up to him, and they were grazing land in front of him. But then seven ugly, skinny cows came up to him, and they ate the seven, the seven other cows. And then the pharaoh woke up, and he realized it was just a dream, so he went back to sleep. But then he had another dream, and in his second dream, there were seven heads of grain, or stalks of grain, and they were healthy looking, and they were growing really fast, but then there were seven other stalks of grain, and they were not growing at all. They were, they were dying, and so the seven unhealthy stalks of grain ate the other healthy ones. And then the pharaoh woke up, and he realized it was just a dream. He was, it was just a dream, so he went back to sleep. And then the morning came, and he could not stop thinking about these dreams. So he gathered all his wise men, and he, he told them his dreams, and he said, interpret these dreams for me. And none of them could. They had no idea what the dreams meant. But then the cupbearer remembered that he had a friend in prison that could interpret dreams. So he told the pharaoh, and the pharaoh took Joseph out of prison, and he told Joseph, he told Joseph his dreams, and he said, can you interpret it for me? And he said, I cannot interpret it for you, but God can interpret it for you through me. And so then he said, well, this is where your dreams mean. The seven cows, the seven healthy fat cows, and the seven good stalks of grain are the same, mean the same thing. The seven fat cows and the seven good stalks of grain mean that there will be seven good years of food. There's going to be a lot of food, and Egypt is going to have more food than they could ever imagine. But then, the seven bad stalks of grain and the seven unhealthy cows also mean the same thing. It means there will be seven years of famine where there's no food at all, and Egypt So you need from the first seven years and keep it so that way Egypt does not starve during the next seven years. And the Pharaoh was like, well, if this is true, then I'm going to need that's going to be able to keep track of all the food and store it and put it, put it where it needs to be. And he said, Joseph, why don't you do that? And so he, the Pharaoh took a ring off of his finger and he put it on Joseph's finger and he said, you will be the second most important man in all of Egypt because you interpreted my dream for me. And you, there will not be anyone who comes out in and out of Egypt without your permission. You will be second to me. And so that's what he did. Joseph stored the food during the first seven years and he distributed it to the people during the next seven years. And he was able to take, bring the Israelites into Egypt and he was able to feed them so they didn't starve he was able to save God's people because he trusted in God. And probably one of the least important men in Egypt to one of the greatest because he trusted in God. Thank you, Daisy. Welcome. I don't think I could have said that much better myself. And so, Joseph trusted in God. And he got freedom from prison was put in charge of Egypt, and Joseph trusted in God also, and he was able to free the people of Israel from starvation so that they couldn't die, just as we have freedom in God from sin, death, and the devil. So as we go about our day today and our weekend, and we celebrate our freedoms, let's also remember the freedoms that we have in Jesus. Let's take a moment and thank him. Dear Jesus, thank you for the freedoms that we have in your suffering, death, and resurrection. Help us to always remember that our greatest freedom is the forgiveness that we know in your blood. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, my friends. Have a blessed holiday weekend. Thank you, Daisy. You have a blessed holiday weekend. 
And the congregation will continue now as we sing our hymn of the day, Battle Hymn of the Republic. Thanks, guys. Greetings, my dear friends, on this 4th of July weekend where we celebrate not only our freedom in, as citizens of the United States, but also our freedom as citizens of God's kingdom. And as we gather here today, we certainly, if we're honest with ourselves, have much to be thankful for on this weekend of Americana. Maybe some of us are thinking about our freedoms. Maybe some of us are thinking about our independence. Maybe some of us are thinking about our flag. Maybe even some of us are thinking about more trivial things like baseball, apple pie, and Chevrolet, as the tagline went many years ago. Or maybe even Thanksgiving, or uh, Thanksgiving fireworks. But as we come to worship on this 4th of July weekend, I want us to not only remember how blessed we are physically speaking, but also and more importantly, to remember how blessed we are spiritually speaking. Patriotism and Christianity have a lot in common throughout our history. 
the hymn, My Country, Tis of Thee, which we sang just a little while ago, was written by a Baptist clergyman named Samuel Francis Smith. The Pledge of Allegiance, which we recited in our service today, was written by a Baptist minister named Francis Bellamy. The words, In God We Trust, which are printed on our coins and currencies, was the effort of Reverend W.R. Watkinson. He wrote a letter of recommendation to the Treasury of the Secretary, Treasury of Secretary of the Treasury, Samuel Chase, and later, seven days later, in fact, Mr. Chase wrote to the director of the Mint as following: "No nation." can be strong except in the strength of God, or safe except in his defense. The trust of our people in God should be declared on all our national coins. Will you cause a device to be prepared without delay, with a motto expressing the finest, in the finest and tersest words possible, this national recognition? And thus we have those famous words on our coins. In God we trust. The only clergyman to sign the Declaration of Independence was a Presbyterian minister who was the president of a little college in New Jersey. He had taught nine of the other signers of the Declaration of the Independence, and his little college became known as Princeton University. So as Christians, we know a thing or two about freedom. It's the natural state in which we live, or at least live. And yes, we do live in the United States of America. And as citizens of this country, we have certain unalienable rights very familiar to us, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We live in freedom because our Constitution, which we hold dearly, protects those rights, and that tyranny and enslavement are illegal or tolerated in our country. And those are the freedoms that our nation celebrates this weekend, the freedoms that we cherish as citizens of this country the freedoms that we've come to know and love as citizens of this United States. But as Christians, we know an even greater freedom. Paul writes in our epistle reading from Romans that Jim read a few moments ago, for we know that our old self was crucified with Christ so that the body of sin might be done away with and that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. It's great as we celebrate this weekend to live in a free country it's wonderful to be able to make the choices we want that we feel are best for ourselves and for our family. It's fantastic to be able to speak with an open mind and be able to promote our opinions. But even as we celebrate all of these freedoms, we're still bound by the slavery that we have to sin. Because our natural tendency, my friends, is to look to ourselves. Our natural tendency is to do what I want to do. Our natural tendency is to ask ourselves. That's because our sinful nature holds us captive. Captive to Satan, captive to his influence in our lives. Is it never really works out that well. And pretty soon we find ourselves in the same old rut. 
looking out for O numero uno. We're trapped, we're imprisoned, and we're certainly not free. But then Jesus came, and Jesus did something about it because he took upon himself our frail human flesh, our frail blood with all of our weaknesses, with all of our faults, with all of our limitations. And he over. and an innocent life to the cross and he sacrificed himself in our place. He died for us. And today, Paul tells us that we've died right along with him in our baptisms. And he tells us that in Jesus' death, we have And that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to us. Because our definition of freedom certainly isn't death. Our cultural definition of freedom is, well, it's anything but But here's We also die to sin. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that our body of sin might be done away with and that we would no longer be slaves to sin because we've been freed from it through the death of Jesus. See, real freedom comes not in the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Real freedom becomes because sin of and then Paul goes on to tell us that if we've died with him then we also believe that we live with him because since Christ was raised as mastery over him the death he died to sin, he lives. He lives to God. And then he says, dead to sin, alive to God. My friends, we have freedom because of death death in Christ Jesus because that death leads to Christ and life in Christ leads to eternal life and eternal life equals eternal freedom thanks so and celebrate the many freedoms that we have as citizens of this great country. Citizens that we enjoy, rights that we cherish, freedoms that we want to preserve. Let's celebrate them with baseball, hot dogs, apple pie and Chevrolet, and maybe even some fireworks. But let's never, never, ever forget the eternal freedom that we have in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's in his name. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you're able as we declare our faith together in the words that are printed in your worship folder on page 9. 
We believe in God the Father Almighty, who calls us as his own and has created all that we have and are. was sent to earth to live as a man, yet was God, holy and true, cross to bear our sins, that we might know forgiveness and be a And he now rules on high, seated at the right hand. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the power of God that calls us enlightens us and empowers us as his children and his holy nation. By his power we shall rise up as a mighty nation filled with the Spirit of the Lord. A shining in this world by the gifts he has given us in us and together we shall be patient. Maybe on this first Sunday of the month, if you brought a gift for the food pantry, please bring that up and place it in the chancel right now. If you brought other gifts, you can place them in the plate that's back there in the back of the sanctuary as we always have. And after we're done with that, we'll continue with the prayers of God's people. Let us pray now for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father, we thank you that you have released us from the bondage of sin and that we now belong to Jesus. Help us to always serve you in this new life of the Spirit and to bear fruit for you always. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we thank you for all that you do to provide us with our daily bread. Be with all who work to grow the fruits of the earth that you have given us for food. Give them favorable weather and a successful harvest. Bless also all those who are involved in commerce and industry. Allow the fruits of their labor to provide for the material needs of the many who rely on them. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we thank you for our nation and for the many freedoms that you have provided for us here. Guide our elected and appointed leaders to serve us with integrity. Be with those who defend our freedoms and our armed forces, as well as our police and firefighters and other civil servants who protect our freedoms closer to home. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we thank you for the freedom from sin, sickness, and death that will come with the full manifestation of your Son's kingdom. Give comfort, healing, and patience and endurance to our friends, Reverend Tom Agold, Jess Ensley, Chris Herman, Gary Holland, Reverend John Callio, Phil Koshua, Sheila Koshua, Alvin Ruth, Frank and Ellen Shaw, Wilma Slemons, Chevelle Slemons, Ed Ed Shoemaker, and all who suffer from illness, injury, or chronic afflictions. Strengthen their faith so that they may know that despite their suffering, they have not lost their reward. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we thank you for the gift of family and lift up to you the families of our congregation and community, especially those who are celebrating birthdays. Sherry Hildreth, Jeremy Killebrew, Dolores Giles, Sharon Sauer, and Tahir 
Hajj Muhammad Riza. Make us faithful proclaimers of the freedoms we have in your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we thank you for the seasons and for the means to travel the earth that you've given to us. Keep safe all those who journey, whether by land, sea, or air, and bring them safely to their destinations and see them home again. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, every day you provide us with opportunities to show your love through this congregation, our family of faith. Thank you for the opportunity to support these vital ministries with these gifts of food and time and resources. Continue to encourage us to be your servants by the power of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we thank you for the foretaste of the feast that is to come that comes with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. May this holy meal which we are about to receive strengthen our faith, bind us to you, and free us for service to others. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we thank you for the great cloud of witnesses that surrounds us. Join our prayers with theirs and bring us at last with them into the full freedom of your kingdom. All this we pray through Jesus, your Son, who also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And I now invite you to stand for our communion liturgy as you turn to page 10 in your worship folders. The Lord has promised he's always with you. Lift up your hearts to him. Let us give him thanks and praise. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, All of you drink of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, poured out for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this every time you drink it in memory of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away all my sins now.
King of nations, we thank and praise you for creating our world, working through our government, and setting us free once and for all through your sacrifice for the sins of the world. Guide us, your people, who have been nourished with your body and blood, to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, my friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and fill you with his peace, both today and tomorrow and into eternity. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. All right. Happy Fourth of July weekend, friends. Don't forget as you're cleaning out your attics and your garages and your closets that uh, we're having a yard sale here on October 7th during our community festival. Way to go. We all got it now, October 7th. Our church council meeting, which is regularly tomorrow night, is postponed for a week until next Monday, July the 10th. And that is all that I have. Does anybody else have anything else? Nope. Ed. Okay. Did you hear that, men? No men's club meeting on the 13th. We're going to skip and meet the second, the, you know, second Thursday in August. If it's the 10th, that's right. Thank you, Ed. Joanne. Hey. Thank you, Daisy, for helping me with the children's time this morning. And uh, we missed Kirk and Mark today. They're gone on uh, their travels, and they'll be gone again next weekend. But uh, we'll muddle on without them, and uh, we'll, be, we'll welcome them back when they return from their travels. Our closing hymn today is America the Beautiful. <laughs> 